what is going on people inside of the internet machine thank you so much for clicking on the video my name is chris miller and uh yeah i just do pickup videos so as you saw in the pre-intro there um we found a ti-83 calculator at a thrift store unfortunately it was in less than premium condition uh, the battery cover was missing and the battery compartment itself was like all corroded and, and nasty so um I made a business decision there and I went ahead and I left it for the Sharks. Um, you know, we'll, we'll give the Sharks one. We'll let them have that one. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get the next one. Um, also, just kind of a side note there, there was a TI-83 calculator. The one that you're really kind of looking for is the, uh, the TI-83 Plus. So, yeah, whatever. All right. The second piece of video that we, we kind of looked at there was uh, we are at Meijer or Target or wherever. And uh, I just want to look at the Amiibos. I, I haven't really stopped to, like, look at the... the Amiibos in person. I've you know seen them online, obviously, and things like that. But I, I really do enjoy the sculpts. Like I, I like the characters and the character models and things like that. I don't really have any complaints about that. Um, but I really don't have any practical use for them, right? I, I don't I don't own a 3ds or anything like that. But I guess if I saw them at garage sales or something for a buck or two a piece, maybe this year or next year or something, I would buy them. But just so I could kind of display them and have them out and that kind of stuff. But he, here's my thing. Maybe maybe I'm not understanding the concept of the amiibo. So so Nintendo, I I, I spend two hundred dollars on a system. Okay, now I, I get that. I've, I've been doing that since like '85, right? We're, we're going good there. Then I have to spend fifty dollars on a on a game for my new console. Again, hey, I'm with you. I've been. We've been doing it since 85. That's Don't break that format. That's what we should be doing. So so then now you want me to spend another $15 so I can put the character on my console to unlock stuff that's in the game already, like extra powers and suits. and I, I just don't... Why, why do I need to spend that extra 15 bucks? Maybe, again, maybe I'm maybe I'm too old, man. Maybe I'm way out in left field on this one. Could you imagine buying a Nintendo? Okay, 1985. You, you bought a Nintendo. Okay, and that that console actually came with the game, right? So you, you get your your console set up. It's 1985. It's Christmas Day. You know, all whatever. And uh, you you put the Mario game in, and it loads up. But unfortunately, and able to get to that other platform, you know, to, to get the to get the, the Fire Flower, you got to have some downloadable content, or you have to go buy a Mario figure and touch it to your your toaster Nintendo. I, again, may, maybe the whole thing sounds crazy to me. It sounds like a sham. I don't know. May, maybe that maybe that's just me. I, maybe, like I said, maybe I'm way too old, and I'm a little upset with Nintendo right now for the reason that we're going to talk about next. But first, I apologize for. For not having a video up um, last week, I, I was sick. I watched Blast Mode 7's video, and he was sick. And in watching his video, I got a virus, and now I'm sick because of Blast Mode 7. Thanks, buddy. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Don't, don't unsub. Don't unsub. Please, God, don't unsub. So, all right. So, so I'm laying in bed because I'm sick. Thanks to Blast Mode 7, and um, I'm watching all of the. Uh, WWF Raws from 1996. I don't know why I just felt compelled to tell you guys that. Um, and now I feel like an even bigger loser than I was 20 seconds ago. But I decided to check my Club Nintendo account to see if they you know, updated their games or whatever. And I'm, I was met with, like many of you, with this big title block that said that they're discontinuing the Club Nintendo nonsense. Now... I... <clears throat> I've only been doing the Club Nintendo for two years. I was a gold member last year. I'm a gold member this year. You know, I, I don't buy a lot of, you know, Wii U or 3DS stuff. You know, I don't own those consoles. So, you know, I, I'm not really losing anything, right? Maybe one, one or two downloadable games that probably I'm already going to have anyway, or within the year or two, I'll have a physical copy in my collection. So, really, it's not that big of a deal. But people that are elite status members... You guys put in a lot of work to get to your elite status membership, right? You go, you buy the games, 
you sit down in front of the computer, you, you punch in all those numbers, you, you answer the surveys, and then about four or five days later, they hit you up with another survey for 10 free coins, and you're not going to take that one because you want those 10 free coins. And it's like, it, it it's maddening. I don't understand why I just can't transfer over on July 1st of this year my, my Club Nintendo coins into Mario dollars or Luigi bills or whatever the hell it is you're going to call it. And then we can continue on the same process for years and years to come. I, Nintendo, when you guys screw something up, man, you do it well. Because I, I'm probably not even going to bother with the Club Nintendos or the rewards anymore. And it's just, what a mess. What a mess. So if you guys have any thoughts on Club Nintendo closing down again, maybe, maybe I'm too old. Maybe I'm bitter. That's fine. I probably am. So let's get into the pickups because nobody wants to pay to hear me or tune in to watch me, you know, complain about stupid Nintendo. All right. So if you guys remember from the last episode, uh, had a Craigslist deal. We picked up this very beautiful copy of Mystic Defender um, from a very nice couple, very sweet couple. And the next day, um, the lady emails me and she's like, hey, Chris, we have this item and you know, we don't have any use for it and, you know, we don't, we're not going to like try and sell it or anything. It's not really kind of worth my time to do that. But if you want it, you're more than welcome to come over and grab it and you can have it for free. So that item was an original Xbox S type controller. And this controller is in mint like condition. Okay. Um, it, it looks like it just came out of the, the wrapper, the box, you know, great condition. Um, Again, guys, I really appreciate this. Um, Christopher and I, my son and I, we're going to fire up the Xbox probably tomorrow or the next day because he wanted to play Metal Slug. So couldn't have been better timing. Um, I had um, another S-Type controller, but something electrical is wrong with it. I don't know if there's a wire loose in there. I haven't really taken it apart, but um, I, I think it's broken because it's just it's dead. It, there's no response from anything. But So this, this was... A very, very generous, well-timed gift. And I can't thank you guys enough. And I wish you all the best, you know, in, in your future endeavors. And if you ever need anything, please do not hesitate to email me. And, you know, if I can help you out, I definitely will. So, again, thank you guys very much. Um, a couple days after, after I picked up that beautiful Xbox controller, um, I had a Craigslist sale. I was buying something. I bought two Game Boy Advance games for, for five bucks a piece. But uh, the area that we met in was it was close to a Goodwill. We were going to meet at 8. And my Goodwills closed at 8. So I actually showed up there about 7.30 just so I could hit the Goodwills. I didn't find anything. But in their DVD bin, I guess is what it's a tub. Whatever. Who cares? It's Goodwill. But um, I found Shenmue 2 for the original Xbox. This is just the manual. But it's in really good shape. It's got a little wear and tear there. And then down here on the corners where you would expect them to have wear and tear. But I'll eventually get that game. And uh, if it's missing the manual, then there you go. Or if one of my collector friends needs that manual to complete a game, then I'll just pass it on to him. Um, Goodwill charged me a dollar for that. So, again, I, I think a dollar for a Shenmue manual is a good investment. All right. So, like I said, I picked up two... Uh, Game Boy Advance games. The first one was Dragon Ball Z Boo's Fury. Now, um, interestingly enough, this was a, a game that Jeff Mack and Z actually gifted to A Crosby 1099. So it's kind of cool to see the, the same game kind of pop up on a couple different channels. At least I think that's kind of neat. But uh, there is the label. Now, this thing was in horrible condition when i when i got it the uh with the seam right here where you see the uh the two pieces of plastic come together it was like so chucked full of gunk and just all kinds of nastiness it, it took me a while to get actually get that one cleaned out um for those of you guys that don't know it's just a tri-wing screw on the back you take that out and the the casing's supposed to just like slide and then pop off i had to like force it to pop off because it was so gunked down in there uh, the PCB board that was in there was like all gunked and I had to take a, a flathead screwdriver and literally, I'm not lying, had to pry the board away from the plastic and I had to do it in such a way that I didn't crack the board. So yeah, it was, it was kind of a time consuming process for such a tiny, tiny game. 
All right, second game that we uh, we picked up, Super Mario Advance. And again, there's the game. Check that out real quick. I do love um, getting these Game Boy Advance slots in these DS cases, and then um, going to the CoverProject.net, which I know I've talked about before. And if you have been collecting, you I mean you've probably already been there, but you can go there and you can basically print out every single cover for every single video game in every different region <laughs> that, that's ever been made. Um, you can print out replacement covers and all kinds of stuff. So definitely check that out if you need that. Um, so again, here's the game. Basically just a port of Super Mario Bros. 2 from Mario All-Stars on the Super Nintendo. That version has some different features to it, like there's those big ace coins that are similar to the Dragon Coins in Super Mario World. I'm not sure what your bonus is for getting all of them. Also, if you remember in Super Mario Bros. 2, you use a potion, you go in the door, you go in kind of like a shadow world, and if there's a mushroom there, you pick up the mushroom and it'll add you know, an extra hit to your life bar. In that version, you can do the mushrooms too, but there's also these giant Yoshi eggs that you can collect. And again, I'm not sure what your bonus is for getting all of those, but um, it's, it's just something extra in the game. I actually didn't like that version of the game. I, I thought it, the characters felt heavier. And maybe it... I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I was playing on my Wavebird controller on my actual GameCube with my Game Boy Player. I don't know if there's some issue there. But I actually didn't prefer that version of the game. And if you are if you want to play Super Mario Bros. 2 um, you, or play a port of it, play the Super Mario All-Stars version for the Super Nintendo. That's probably the better version. Uh, one thing that a game does come with is it also comes with Super Mario Brothers, the arcade game. So if you're a fan of that particular game, you can play um, Super Mario Brothers, the arcade arcade game. All right, so um, we won uh, an auction on Auction Ohio. Um, I know I've talked about before, they, they do weekly auctions and on a variety of things. So one second, let me grab my receipt. So I'll pick up my receipt here, and as you can see, I won an auction for one dollar, and with uh, court costs and fines, I was out the door at a dollar ten. And you can kind of see in the descriptor there, it was a box of VHS movies, Xbox games, books, and then there was this glass plaque that I'll talk about here in a second. Um, so, okay, yeah. So the, the first thing is like like I said, it was a box of. Uh, VHS tapes that were from the Westerville Public Library. They're all educational type movies. I'm kind of looking down around now. It's like Agatha Christie and Woody and Bo, The Ten Year War, Inherent the Wind, Man of a Thousand Faces. So if anybody that has my email that, you know, if you want any any of these old VHS from Westerville Public Library, maybe that's something you're into, you are more than welcome to have them. I'll just bring them to you. Free of charge. You're welcome. All right. There's also some books and stuff in there, like on German Shepherds and uh, Goldfish and Aquatic Marine Life. And there's a cookbook in there called Cooking with Cheese, which, uh, oh, okay, sure, why not? But uh, there was this really cool placard in there, the nativity scene plate. This is the Makisa, Makisa, Ma, Ma something. Um these things still sell on eBay for 10, 15 bucks, somewhere in there. This one's complete with the box and the cardboard and the stands and the little bag and everything else. So I think what I'll do is I'll throw that up on Craigslist. And again, I paid a dollar for the entire box, so a dollar ten. So I'll probably just try and sell that real cheap, get my money right back. But like I said in the thing, there were Xbox games in there. So the first Xbox game was uh, Xbox 360 Connect Adventures. Now again... Uh, this one is complete. There was also another copy of Xbox Adventures, and that one is also complete. I know those are exciting titles. Um, the third game in there was, uh, in the last game, definitely the best game, was uh, Halo 2 for um, the original Xbox. It was a Platinum Hits edition, and it is also complete. Um, again, I'll I have those games, and again, they're not very expensive games, and they're not like the greatest games in the world, but again, for, you know, a dollar, those things will make great trades or giveaways and stuff like that, so maybe somebody else can enjoy them. All right, 
So, uh, yeah, so, you know, we hit thrift stores, and there really wasn't any games or anything like that out there this uh, this past couple weeks. But um, we did find a couple things. The first thing I found for $2.99 was a um, multi-outlet cable. Um, you can see it's uh, Super Nintendo, GameCube, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 2, and original Xbox. So, um, yeah, those types of cables, you know, I, I try not to pass them up, especially if they're, you know, three bucks or something like that. Um, and especially the ones for the, the GameCube and Super Nintendo and N64, those things are like, they're like gold, they're valuable. So if you ever find anything like that, you know, buy those definitely. All right, the second thing we got, we went to a, a different thrift store, like an Ohio Thrift or something, and uh, I'm looking, browsing through their games. This, this place typically has never really yielded anything that important. It's just kind of on the way, so I always stop. Uh, Super Mario Kart Wii for five bucks. Now, Mario Kart games, you know, they always hold their value. Everybody loves them. They're fun to play. Um, but this one didn't have a game in it. Somebody had already stolen the game. So... Instead of getting angry and throwing this thing across the thrift store and hitting some kid in the face, I calmly walked up to the lady and I was like, look, somebody stole the game out of here. What are you going to do about it? I didn't say that. I walked up to the lady and I was like, ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you right now, but it appears that some, some hoodlum has hornswoggled you out of this game, but I really want to buy this case. Will you sell it to me for a dollar? Because I have this game. And I need the case. So if you could find it in the kindness of your heart. And she said, just go ahead and take it. You can have it. Because I'm just going to throw it away. And I said, ma'am, God bless you. And I left. So cool, right? That was like way over the top and unnecessary in every faction, right? But all right. So speaking of thrift stores, uh, Gamer John actually had a pretty nice find this week. Um, he had uh, found a PSP at a thrift store for four bucks. Took it to a, a game store that we, you know, we kind of frequent, um, and they let him borrow a charger to see if it would power on. Powered on, played. Apparently there was something wrong with a joystick or a button or something, um, and they told me they, they could fix it for like twenty something bucks. So yeah, you get congratulations, dude. You got a PSP for for under thirty bucks. That's that's still a heck of a deal. So awesome. Um, Okay, so I'm at buybacks today with my son. I'm just kind of browsing. And I, I kind of had my, my eye on a certain game there for a while. It's not an expensive game. It's called Castle Shikigami 2 uh, for the PlayStation 2. It's a top-down shoot 'em up and I've been, look, I've been looking at buying it for a while. And they've got it at like 14 bucks or 15 bucks, And it, it's really like 5 bucks overpriced, which is what they do. It's to be expected there at buybacks. And for some reason, I just haven't you know pulled the trigger on it. And I didn't a day either. But I was standing there and I'm looking at, at some of their inventory, some of their, their PS2 games. And this lady comes up, right? And she stands like right here. And she's talking on the phone. And she's like like this far away from me. And I'm, I'm kind of looking at the game and I'm kind of looking over at her. And I'm looking at the game. I'm kind of looking over at her. And I'm like, I'm getting ready to say, lady, only the games are for sale in this store, right? So I look over at her and she's like, Oh, do you do you like the PlayStation PlayStation games and stuff? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I like you know PlayStation, GameCube, Nintendo, all, all that stuff. She's like, well, our PlayStation just broke, and we're not gonna bother replacing it or anything like that. But we got a ton of PlayStation Two games, and when the weather broke, I was just gonna throw them in a yard sale. But if you're interested, I live real close to here, and I'll just sell you you know whatever games you want for for two bucks a piece. So yeah, there's nothing sketch about that at all. So I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll follow you back to your place, weird lady. That was creepy. And uh, I, I'm just kidding. She was very sweet. So I grabbed my son and he was with his girlfriend. So we, we jump in the car. We follow her, her over to her place. It's, you know, right down the road. And uh, basically what they're doing is they're, they're just going to give up on the PlayStation thing. They've got a Wii and uh, Wii U, I think. And... Uh, yeah, so she was just going to sell the PlayStation games at a garage sale this upcoming summer. And whatever money they made off of it, they kind of put in this this jar. And that's going to help pay for their trip to Disneyland. They're going to take their kid to Disneyland for the first time. Which I thought was awesome. Because uh, we went there when I was a kid and I had a great time. So 
So yeah, so I, we get in the house, we look through these games, they got stacks of games, you know, but most of them are missing their manuals or they're like Cabela titles, um, which, which are cool, but, you know, eh. Um, a lot of them were in just regular cases with no cover art or manuals or anything, but I did find a couple things there. So first thing, she threw in for free, um, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, there's no game in here. But she basically threw it in because I, I needed the manual. I, I have this game, Black Label, nice copy, but I don't have the manual. So um, that was very nice of her to, to throw that in there as like a, like a little bonus. Um, the next game that we picked up, now these were all two bucks, um, if I didn't mention that before. Well, uh, Onamusha 2. Again, this one is complete. I have the first Onimusha game and I really enjoyed it, so I'm kind of looking forward to playing that one and Onimusha 3. And again, this one is complete. These cases are a little beat up, but, you know, those are easily replaced. Uh, okay, so if you remember in the last episode, we had uh, Gamer John gave us that stack of games and we found Ratchet and Clank. And my son had the case for Ratchet and Clank, so he kind of hooked me up there. So we picked up Ratchet and Clank. So we'll get some more, more games in the Ratchet and Clank series. Again, that one's complete. This manual, this is like the beefiest manual I've ever seen for a PlayStation 2 game. That thing is thick. It's, it's like a like a small comic book or something. It's bizarre. And then we picked up finally Ratchet and Clank uh, Size Matters. And that one is also black label, complete, nice condition. All that stuff. So um, again, two bucks. Add some complete PlayStation games to my collection. Now, my son loves like Ratchet and Clank and Jax and Dexter and um, Sly Cooper, you know, games like that. So I'm sure he'll probably jack those games from me, and I might not ever see them again. But two dollars is a small investment for my son's happiness. Okay, so um, guy had this item posted on Craigslist. I don't know, a couple months, two months, and. Uh, he wanted 40 bucks for it. And I, I really kind of wanted the item because I needed, I have it, but I wanted to upgrade my copy of it. So like, you know, a month ago or a couple weeks ago or whatever, he dropped it down to 30 bucks. And I was like, I don't know, that game probably is not going to, not going to last much longer, but I just, I decided to pass on it because I already have the game. So it's past Friday. It's Sunday now. So this was like a couple days ago. Um, he posted on there that he had, you know, he dropped the price to 25 bucks, which, which is a really good price. Um, but I asked him, I, you know, I, I emailed him and said, Hey, would, you know, would you take 20 bucks for it? And he's like, well, you know, I kind of dropped the price three times already. I'm kind of firm at, at 25 bucks, which is it, okay. You know, I mean, it's, it's your item. It's on Craigslist. You price it, you know, how you're comfortable. And you know, that everybody that posts on Craigslist kind of knows that, right? Um, but I, I just had to make the decision of whether I was going to let this item slip away over $5. And sometimes you have to. Sometimes it's just, you know what, it's too much of a hassle. I don't really need this item. You know, I could use that 5 bucks for something else. But this was one of those those rare cases where I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to squabble over 5 bucks. So we set up the meet. He's like, you know, my, my girlfriend or whatever is at work and, you know, I'm at home right now. Um, you know, if you want to swing by, swing by. If not, we'll have to wait till later. So I'm like, nah, it's cool, man. I'll, I'll swing, swing by. So I go over to the guy's, uh, the guy's apartment, real nice guy. Um, really knows the stuff about gaming or whatever. And, uh, he was just kind of getting rid of some of his console stuff because he wanted to do, he wanted to do like more PC stuff, more, more computer games, which is cool. So, um, like I said, this, this was a, a total upgrade for me. And uh, some of you have actually commented to me about this in person. Uh, and if you're, if, you, if you're focusing too much on what's going on in the background and not on the main event, which is me, then you need to take a time out and refocus and come back and you know fo focus on the big doll. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, if you look at the GameCube games, right, like, the GameCube logos are down here in the black area or the player's choice area, the yellow area. And then, like, the the side label for the game is there, but then 
you know, this little white line that goes across. It kind of separates the two, and you can kind of see mine go straight across until it gets to about here. And then something happens. Something bad happens. So this is actually my copy of Zelda Ocarina of Time Master Quest. Now my copy is complete, but I got this from a, a, a family member for free. And they're like, hey, we don't have GameCube anymore. You, got, you just want this? And I'm like, yeah, sure, definitely, even though it was in terrible condition. You can kind of see that the, the slip cover has come out of the casing, and it's below there. Unfortunately, I can't just lift up the plastic and slide it because it's stuck somehow. I don't know how that's translating on the on the video, but it's basically stuck in that position because there's like some pop or something that got down in there, and it's it's basically stuck the plastic to the paper. So the item that I bought from this this guy from twenty five bucks was a very very beautiful copy of the Legend of Zelda uh, Ma Ocarina of Time Master Quest. And as you can see, the slip cover is in beautiful condition. The spine's in beautiful condition. And this copy is also complete with the manual and the precautions manual. But um, this copy of Ocarina of Time, the Master Quest, did come with the Zelda Wind Waker uh, special preview guide with it. So, you know, this one's like extra complete. So I'll take this. We will put that on the shelf. And now everything is correct in the universe, right? Everything, everything is nice and sound. So that is it for this episode. This is like a 20 something minute video, 25 minute video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, subscribing. And as always, we have a new shout out or a new subscriber shout out. Thank you very much. Um, D control. Thank you very much for subscribing. Um, and I'll put the link in the description to D-Control's channel in case anybody wants to jump over there and check out check out what's going on over there. So again, thank you guys very much uh, for watching and sticking with me through this very long video. And as always, happy gaming, guys. Wow.